Now the title of this video might seem a little strange. The Sherman is a well-loved tank. I mean, you can't go into any online history community without seeing someone praise it, or at least making fun of the people who say that it took five Shermans to kill a tiger. But the truth is, I was never the biggest Sherman fan. In fact, I used to think it was overhyped and worse than many of the other tanks that were on the battlefield. So the title and point of this video isn't for people who think the Sherman was good, it isn't for diehard Veraboos who think that anything the Allies made could never be better than a German weapon. It's for people who think that the Sherman was alright, but very overrated. Basically, I'm going to explain why the Sherman should be your favourite tank of the war. Okay, I'm not really going to tell you what tank should be your favourite. I mean, that's completely subjective. It can be whatever the hell you want it to be, even a tiger. I mean, I'd probably still put the panther in my top 10 and that tank sucks. I just wanted to make this video to explain why you shouldn't just overlook the Sherman just because it's popular like I did. Another thing I won't be doing is delving deep into the development history of the Sherman and I may generalize it as just the Sherman rather than going into each specific version. I'm gonna focus on talking about the reasons I used to dislike the tank to try and dissuade people from thinking that same kind of stuff, which is mostly things that I don't see discussed as much. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Now, as a young and very British historian, the first thing that I compared the Sherman to was this, the humble Cromwell. And why shouldn't I? They have similar guns, similar frontal armor thickness, and a similar battle rating in War Thunder. Which obviously means they came out around the same time. Oh. The Cromwell entered service two years later than the Sherman. I think this is a big problem with Sherman haters. Uh, they're comparing it to tanks which are either in completely different classes than it, or tanks that were designed several years after it, or even tanks which it barely ever fought. The Tiger was not a common tank to see, of course. The Sherman was mostly fighting Panzer IVs and infantry. <laughs> This is another commonly overlooked thing about tank combat. The most engagement that tanks got was not fighting tank on tank, but rather fighting against infantry, especially against the very unmechanized force of late war Germany and, well, Japan and Italy in general. Most tanks were good at dealing with infantry, but the Sherman excelled at it. The original 75mm Shermans had a devastating high explosive round which could easily deal with any anti-tank gun crew that it came across, which was far more common than an enemy tank. Not to mention two M1919 Browning machine guns and an M2 Browning. The Sherman was a beast for dealing with infantry. I'm in a tank and you're not. I'm literally in a fucking tank. I'm literally in a tank, get you're not. Get out of the <laughs> You're not my dad. Literally get out of the tank. <laughs> now, okay. Don't ask me why I thought this. I'd seen the tanks in person, in the same room no less. But I thought that the Sherman was too tall. The Sherman ranged between 9 foot and 9 foot 9 inches tall. By comparison, the Tiger was 9 foot 10 inches tall. The Panzer IV was 8 foot 10 inches tall, and the Cromwell, which I thought was a pretty flat tank, was 8 foot 2 inches tall. The difference is completely negligible. I mean, variants of the Sherman were only 2 inches taller than a Panzer IV. Even if there was a slight difference to the height, uh, think about where the Sherman fought. It was mostly in the streets or small fields of Western Europe, or it was in the jungles and forests of the Pacific not the steppes of Ukraine. The Sherman had plenty of cover. It didn't need to be low to the ground to hide. I guess it would matter in the deserts of North Africa, but let's be honest, 
no tank was properly designed to fight in the desert. Again, I honestly don't know where I got this idea from. I guess because the Sherman isn't very wide, it makes it look taller, but I'm not sure. We didn't penetrate their armor. What was that? Sorry, I just had to get myself a drink. While I knew that the frontal armor of the Sherman was very good for a medium tank at the time, I thought that the side armor was, well, lacking. What I failed to remember though is that no tank during World War II had good side armor. I can't think of a single commonly seen tank from World War II which could be penetrated at the side from even some of the weaker anti-tank guns. Except maybe the Churchill. Adding another one to my collection. Even then, the Sherman side armor was not bad for a mid-war medium tank. It had under 10 millimeters less side armor thickness than the Tiger, which is a heavy tank. People, and also me in the past, often cite the fact that the Sherman crews added extra armor to their tanks as proof that the armor wasn't good enough. Ignoring the fact that it actually had very little effect on changing penetration, not everything mounted on a tank was meant for extra armor, and literally every country did it with any of their tanks. It was mostly done for psychological reasons. People felt much safer in an up-armored tank than one with less armor. Kind of similar to the uh, helmet strap myth, where people used to think that if you wore the helmet chin strap, if there was an explosion near you, it would send the helmet flying upwards and snap your neck. Or it was them literally just carrying extra trek links or maybe some logs that were used to help them get out of mud, and it wasn't even meant for armor at all. Now, this video has been pretty silly. Why is my hair... Oh. Let me get that. While these are all things that I used to genuinely believe about the Sherman, all of them are pretty stupid and easy to disprove by just looking them up. So why didn't I? Well, that's what I wanted this last part to be about. Ultimately, whatever World War II tank you think is the best doesn't really matter but there are other bits of history that really do matter. And that's why it's important to not include your pre-existing biases when you're looking into history. Within reason, of course, I'll get to that later. Hey, so it turns out that I ended up not talking about it later, so I'll kind of just briefly explain what I was gonna talk about. Really, all that I was gonna say was to make sure that your sources are reliable um, and to definitely ensure that it's not propaganda. There's a lot of information from the Second World War which is either propaganda from during the war or maybe even some post-war propaganda which in some cases is actually more dangerous than propaganda from during the war. You just generally have to be careful that your sources are reliable and that you're taking into account any biases that the sources themselves may have um, there is no one perfect source of information, and so it's best to look at multiple sources. Basically, I was just going to give the very basics of doing your own research. So yeah, back to myself. One of my first introductions into tanks was War Thunder, where the Shermans are... mid. It's not exceptional in its speed, and the gun is okay, but not great. The armor barely stops anything at its BR level, and so I got a little bit of a bias against the tank from just that. Preconceptions about anything can stem from anywhere, and looking into how the tank actually performed in combat while you're still thinking about how much it sucks from a video game, no matter how conscious you are of the fact that it is a video game, it can still soil your analysis of the real information. Look, research is hard. Trust me, I have had to look at my fair share of military documentation from World War II. Believe it or not, humans are not actually very good at documenting things. Every nation has a different way of counting losses and victories. They all had different needs and requirements for their weapons. 
and there is so much misinformation which gets spread around, it's very difficult to come to an understanding of what something was actually like. Understanding that you have biases and looking past them while doing research is one of the best ways to learn new information which you might usually be unwilling to look at. Learning how best to compare things is great as well. You can't always say, oh, this tank has a bigger gun, so it's better, because tanks were made for different things. It's best to see how well the tank performed in its intended role, and I think that this little guy did pretty great. So this video was pretty different to my other more serious documentary style videos. Um, I honestly don't know which I prefer making. I guess I'll do a mix of both, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm currently at about 120 subscribers, and so this is really my time to just throw things at the wall and see what sticks. If I do make more documentary style content, I'm hoping that it will be much more well researched than my previous ones, and also I might be able to actually go to places to film instead of just using War Thunder footage. Tell me in the comments which you prefer, if you prefer this more silly and over the top style rather than the more serious documentary style content that I've done. I actually found this one a little more fun to do because there was less pressure on it, but hey. I'm also hoping to make some reenactment based content soon. I've technically been reenacting for as long as I've been making history content, but I've been more serious about it recently. I've actually got three impressions now, which you can go and see over on my Instagram, which will be linked in the description. Also, you probably noticed that I kind of have a proper set now. Um, I know that it's just a bookshelf, which is what every YouTube historian has, but I'm hoping to change it up for whatever video topic I'm making, so got my Sherman collection here um, and a couple of other tanks there. Um, I'm hoping to do just little things like that to spice up the background for every video, make everything different. Hopefully you found this quite overdramatic video enjoyable and yeah, I'm officially a Sherman fan now. Yippee! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching me just ramble about a tank for a, however long this video is. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, or all, all that stuff. I, I, I don't know, can if you want. But yeah, hopefully this will mark a bit of a return to making content for me. Um, hopefully I'll get some new videos out sooner than, uh, you know, the two years that I've waited between these. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye. Yummy.